Veritas. I'm 91. I've lived in Norwalk all my life and uh, had no problems, worked, went to school, got married, had four daughters, then uh, you know, started to see the eye doctor regularly. And went about five or six years ago, went for a regular checkup and was told immediately that I should go see a specialist the next day because they thought I possibly would have macular degeneration, which I had never heard of. So I said, okay. And I went to the uh, uh, retina specialist in Westport and I did have macular degeneration. Although I hadn't known any symptoms yet, I had no idea what it was like until I was taking care of my older sister at that time. And one day, driving to Trumbull to see her, I noticed that I was not judging the car in front of me as well as I should. It was kind of blurry. So I had another couple of little episodes with uh, uh, men working on the road where they're telling you to come or go, and I realized that I couldn't tell what his hand was saying. Was I supposed to come or was I supposed to stop? So when I went back to the eye doctor again, I said to him, should I be driving? And he said to me, well, not actually. He said, I can't say you're legally blind, but you really shouldn't be driving. I guess if it was just me, I would have taken my chances, but to take a chance with somebody else's life was something else. So I gave up driving and that just changed my whole life. It uh, just takes your independence away from you totally. Shopping, waiting for people to take you someplace. You can lose your husband and your life changes. And it's, it's a hole in your life. But when you lose your driving, you lose everything. Every Friday I take her to get her hair done. Uh, she goes to the beauty parlor and where she has um, gone there for years with the same ladies. It's like their social club. So I get to take her there, we run errands, and we do anything else that she needs to do. Can I see what she's doing right now? No. I cannot see my face in the mirror. And that's uh, a just, you know, and I don't have to because I trust Terry. So it's a matter of just getting it done and walking out and looking better. But no, I look in the mirror and I cannot see my face. I just want to look nice to other people. I want my hair to look nice. I want to look neat and tidy. You know, I've been doing older people for a long time now, and they were all young once, is what I'm so fond of saying. And now they've gotten older, but I don't see that. I just see the person that I'm that I'm doing, and need to help them look as and feel good as possible. Some people come in, they're they're down. This is wrong. That's wrong. But uh, Mary's always kind of cheery and. And of course, this makes my job a lot easier. Thank you. Okay. You, you have this. Uh, it's my chili. No, I got the chili over you here. You got the chili. This is a french fries. And we don't have to share them with anyone at home. No. This is my lunch. She's very independent, very self sufficient, very. However, um, I think the way it's affected me the most is worrying about her. You girls get over-concerned about me sometimes, which gets me a little bit aggravated because there's a lot of things I cannot do, but there are things I can do, and you make me feel like I'm either stupid or too little. Now, when you take me shopping sometimes, you, hang, you hang on to me. Like, yeah, well, every other Friday, actually, we go shopping, get my hair done, we do all that. We do have a nice day, we get a lot done. But you do hang on to me which sometimes makes me even more uncomfortable. Well, because that has nothing to do with your macular. It has to do because you're 90 years old. Yeah, well, it's my macular, too, because your ma, watch off of the line. Ma, watch this. Ma, can you see that? And you're touching me all the time. So you, 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 you kind of... You kind Wait of, till you, next Friday. I'm going to just let you go, <laughs> yeah, like right. a bull in a china shop. <laughs> yeah. So from then on, that was it. I, I left work because I worked in human resources in a nursing home and uh, couldn't really do the work anymore because I couldn't read and uh, tried to do some volunteer work to keep me going. And uh, that didn't work out because I couldn't read the filing cabinet, so I had to give up volunteer work. I had a friend that was not feeling well and I called and I couldn't even say to her, what can I do for you? I couldn't go out to shop for her. 
I couldn't go to her house and help her. So that all I can do is every day call and find out how she's doing. That's taken away from you as well, because I just can't be of help to anyone else. Yes, macular does make me unsteady, other than the fact that I'm 90 years old and I have arthritis or my knees are bad and my fingers don't work. The, the, um, so my concern is very legit, let's just say. I keep saying, no, I can do it. No, I can do it. Well, actually, I can't do it and have to learn to ask for the help. I love to shop. So I will take her to Walmart and we'll do stop and shop and we'll do that hopefully once a week. We're gonna to try to keep that on a schedule. Then we'll eat and I'll bring her home. She's pretty self-sufficient when she's home. I carry all the groceries in and everything, but she likes to put everything away herself and be structured that way. She's a really strong, independent woman, which is good. It turned you from taking care of others because exactly. you couldn't drive anymore? Yeah. Mm -hmm. You used to take care of others. You've been taking care of my kids. Mm -hmm. You've been taking care of your sisters when they got older. Mm -hmm. to pe for you now, okay, people are going to have to take care of me. So mm -hmm. that was a big That's a good. That's a that's transition a for you, right? I mean, that's a big mm -hmm. thing. Yeah. Yes, big change. However, Ma, you still take care of yourself. Yeah. Yeah. We don't really. Do a that. lot. Yeah, a lot. Yeah, I guess yeah. I do. Uh, you do. I, I've always liked arts and crafts and have always been able to do arts and crafts. And painting was one of the things I enjoyed and did with my sister for years. And uh, but when I got macular, I thought, well, that was the end of that. Well, I came out one day and thought, let me give it a try. And actually found out that I cannot do it as well as I did, but I still can have fun by trying to do something. And I found out, yeah, sure, I can do a little bit of something. I can make a branch. It may not come out beautiful, but I can try and then go back in and try to fix it. Some of them happen very quickly and very easily. Others I have to work with for a while and come back and forth and do them over and over again. And uh, this was just a winter scene. But I do enjoy my painting very much. It is an enjoyable thing to do. So it became a difficult thing trying to decide what am I going to do with myself, but I was fortunate because I have uh, four daughters, I have that all live in town, I have friends that I've had for about 70 years, and some of them were still driving and very, very lucky that they picked me up and dropped me off, and, um, and adjusted from then on to the little things in the house. Fortunately, uh, it wasn't as bad where I was bumping into walls and falling down the stairs, but it was still a big problem. And that's where my life has been for the past five or six years. And uh, like I said, only adjustments I could make was, an example would be going out to lunch with my friends. They were reading the menu to me and it got very annoying. So what I do now is I find out what restaurant we're going to I get on the iPad, look up the menu, find out what I want so that when I get there, I know what I'm gonna have and that saved my friends a lot of problems. A few weeks ago, we went to pay our bill. Oh yeah. And we were told that the couple sitting across from us Paid our bill to, to, for, for us, <laughs> right? We, and without telling know. us, we didn't know it. No, no, no. We didn't that know was them. the second time that happened. Yes, right. we didn't know. Oh, paid for before. Yeah. Before. Yes. By, so, by so, by what summer, do you think? We, what do you think they see? The old old ladies, and we're talking oh. about Medicare and <laughs> our, our arthritis and my but sore back. Always, and, they, but yeah. people always say, "Isn't that nice that you I, all that's what I together?" Think. Angie, Mary, and I were. <laughs> We used to ride the bus together to high school, and that was in 1948, 40. Mm -hmm. I graduated in 49, you I graduated, graduated in 50, 50, and you were 48. Mm -hmm. So we've been together all these years, it's been but good long years. we were getting out of school, and we decided, chief, we're not going to see each other like we did every day going on the bus. We wanted mm. to stay. Close together. Yeah, because we, yes. we, we were close at that time, too. So we came up with this idea that we would start a sewing club. 
Ha, ha, ha. <laughs> yeah. ha, ha, right? ha, ha, right. Remember when we first started, we were single. Uh, we started with having kids. Yeah. And we never realized that this was our actual group therapy. It really turned out to right, be because we yeah. were talking about problems that we all had and realized that we did have them. And we realized that we all had the same problems. Exactly, even exactly. It was different. It was right. the same. We we've grown to be very helpful to each other, very much so. <laughs> yes. As yeah. we got older, well, oh. all the women are here, mm. and we but we've lost our husbands. Yeah, yeah. What was the joke about that? You drove them to it. It was either we're very stronger than men. Or we drove our husbands crazy and they said it's time to go. I have to say that I'm as close to you girls in as I was to my sisters or my daughters that I would, you know, tell you things that I have told them, you know, would tell them. And uh, so that I, I could say basic that we are not only your friends, but we were just another family as well as your own personal family. Is that very exactly. True? Yeah. When I needed friendship, yeah, way back when I was widowed, they were all there for me, yeah. and I appreciated them so much. All these years cannot be pushed aside. The fact that we're here, you know, today, uh, doing the same thing we've been doing for seventy years is amazing. I know. It's, yeah, I think it, it's something it, we should be very proud of. I know. I am. I know. Mm -hmm. Today, if means so much more, I think, that, that during the years. Yeah, because now that we're older, that's right. Judy, as well, is very much part of it over the years, yeah. too. Oh, Judy, She's getting there. Judy's one of us now. <laughs> oh, yeah. Whether she likes it or oh, not. Whether she likes it or not. I have been helped a great deal uh, with my eyesight because of technology. I watch a lot of TV. I find it very relaxing. So I get up as close as I possibly can. I can swivel to get out if I need to leave, or I get up as close as possible. And of course, out comes my nice little remote where I just turn the TV on, and I just push my little, okay, push my little black button and say, uh, Netflix. Sometimes it's blurrier than others, but with macular, my particular macular is I do not see what is directly in front of me. For instance, if I'm watching uh, the Yankees, because I'm a Yankee fan, so if I'm watching the Yankees play ball, I cannot look right at the batter because I can't see him. But I notice that if I look at the advertisement in the back of him, either to the left or to the right, I will see him strike at the ball and uh, be able to watch him hit the ball. So that's an adjustment I've had to make that if I want to see something, do not look directly at it. Look to one side or the other. Hey Google, turn the TV off. Got it, turning off the living room TV. We don't think of her as a person with a disability. To us, she's just Mary and that's it. I also have uh, an iPad. I can go on there and do some shopping. I pay my bills. I go into my bank account. These are basically my two lifesavers right here. She has this machine where she puts the papers under the machine and it magnifies everything. She can still pay all her own bills. She reads all her own mail. So she's a pretty terrific lady, but we, we still worry, worry about her because of her macular degeneration. The other day I wanted to know uh, something about some medication, so I looked it up on the website. I went upstairs the other day and forgot to turn the TV off and wanted to go to bed, and I thought, oh darn it, I have to go downstairs again. Well, I didn't want to go down the stairs, and I remembered that I could tell Mr. Google to turn my TV off, and he did. So I uh, find those are very, very helpful things. I've learned that I can come across a problem, cry all night long, and wake up in the morning and the problem is still there and I'm weaker because I did not sleep all night long. So I have learned to kind of accept things the way they are and just pray that, you know, I'll be able to deal with it in the morning when the morning comes. And macular is one of them. Mm -hmm.